Hey everybody, welcome to You Got This. I'm Pastor Lacey with the River of Columbus. Um, go ahead, push that share button tonight. As you see, our topic tonight is going to be um, Do Not Neglect Church. So we're going to be getting into that. And if this is your first uh, time watching one of these called You Got This, all it is is that it's every other Thursday night now. So every other Thursday night, the Lord's going to lay a topic on my heart. Um, and I just get on here and I just... Uh, preach the word of God and proclaim it over your life and you know just remind you that you got this according to the word of God you can do it um, just different topics and stuff uh, a lot of my past you got this or all of my past you got this are um, on our YouTube channel so you can check that out um, Pastor Sam uploads those on there so that's really cool but uh, yeah if you have topics too that you want me to hit on things that uh, that you just you're like you know what I need help on this what does the word of God say about this um, let me know message me and let me come up to me you know in church and uh, and hopefully if I haven't already done it I'd love to hit on it so um, happy Thursday and and again share this so that uh, so that we can get the word out hey Shana y'all say hey and I'll uh, shout out like that's a big deal I just I like to see who's watching and who's saying hey hey cookie I miss you um, two, I wanted, uh, this is, this is not all of my books that I'm using tonight, but you know, I tell you all the time on here, get into the word of God, study the word of God. So I wanted to, you know, when you, when you hear that sometimes, at least me in the, in the past, if somebody says, you know, a pastor, a preacher, an evangelist says, study the word, you know, I remember that used to be a little bit intimidating to me because all I did was read the word and, you know, it asked the Holy Spirit for help. Um, you know, and then after that, it was just, it was just reading the word of God. And so after a while I, I started asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, give me some resources to use. So when somebody says study the word, these are the things that I use. If you've got things you already use, great. But this is just, just to help you. It's some good stuff we use. My favorite one right now is the, um, is the date. Pastor Kim uses this too a lot on, on Wednesday nights, but it's really simple. If you know me, you know I'm simple. Don't let this intimidate you. You don't have to have a degree in college to study this. Uh, all I did was dental hygiene. You have to count to 32 because there's 32 teeth in the mouth. That's as far as I go. So you don't have to be super intelligent. But I uh, know it's really good because um, when you read it, I mean, it's got uh, passages in here that tell you what's a promise of God, what's a command of God. It uh, gives you references to other places in the Bible, um, and it also just, it explains the scripture. It'll give you detail uh, about, you know, um, about a certain scripture. Have you ever gotten to a scripture and you're just like, man, I, I just don't understand this. You can literally look right to the side, and it's got, it's got the explanation for it. It's really cool. Um, my next favorite, while you guys are, are, are um, joining and sharing, welcome to You Got This, is the, this is really hard for me to say because I used to have a speech impediment with my R's and my W's. <laughs> this is called the Warrell Bible. The Warrell Bible, I have to concentrate. Um, this one's harder to find, but it's really good. It's just the New Testament and it's very powerful. Uh, at the bottom, it's got literally ex explanations of, of the scriptures, each scripture. So it'll say like verse 28, and you can look down here and you say, what in the world is this guy talking about? You know, what's Paul saying here? You can look down here in verse 28 and it'll tell you. This one's harder to find. Um, you have to find like a used one on eBay. Manning Strickland, we found ours on eBay. Wherever you are, thank you for your Roar L Bible. But that's good stuff. Um, and then, of course, you have the different translations. Um, I like the New Living because, like I said, it's simple. And then the Passion uh, Translation, which is really new. got one of these. It's only New Testament and uh, Psalms and Proverbs, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, Psalms and Proverbs. I think that's it. Um, that one's really good. I mean, it just words things. Words things really simple. Um, all right, let's see who's... Hey, Grandma. <laughs> hey, Ted. Love you guys. Hey, Kyle. Um, and everybody else that's watching. So we're going to get started tonight. Get your Bibles out. The topic tonight is don't neglect church. So <clears throat> I was just reading, you know, in my and having my prayer time and was just thinking about how much of an impact, as cheesy as it sounds, you know, um, just how much of an impact church has had on my life. So the Lord brought me to Hebrews 10.25. So if you have your Bibles, get that out. Turn to Hebrews 10.25. It says, 
And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. You know, there's a lot of people out there who don't believe that you need to, that you need to go to church. I mean, they, they don't believe that you have to go. They don't believe that it's necessary. They believe that they are just fine uh, having their time at home just with their family. But this scripture right here is pretty blunt to the point to be. Do not neglect meeting together as some people do. Going to church with a body of believers somewhere other than at home with your family where there's a pastor that is biblical that's what the word of god says to do plain and simple it is biblical to go to church not only is it biblical but he says don't neglect meeting together as some people do so times have not changed from the beginning when you know god created the earth and then jesus came there were people who uh, just did not want to listen to this say so, you know what i don't i don't need church i'm fine I'm fine, though. I'm fine, I have a relationship with Jesus, I don't have to go, I've got other things to do. But we know the Word of God says don't let us neglect meeting together as some people do. The world will make it normal for you as a believer not to go to church. They'll say, oh, if you just go one time a month, you know, that's fine, you know. Oh, if you just, you know, go every once in a while, it's fine, you know, you've got the people to go on Christmas, you've got the people to go, you know, on Easter. But if you step back and you look at their lives, or if you step back, if you were that person and you look at your life, you see the results of not being committed and going to church. You can see eventually the results of neglecting going to church. Religion will do that to you and the world will make it normal. But you know, I was thinking, I was raised, even before my dad was a pastor, before my uh, Pastor Mike and Pastor Kim were pastors, we went to church. I mean, there was no question. I do not remember a day when we all, you know, sat around thinking, oh, we, I don't want to go to church today, Mom, Dad. I, I, don't care if I, I don't care if I wanted to sleep in. My dad came into my room, even as a teenager, every morning, and he didn't know how to quietly open a door. He still didn't know how to quietly open a door. It was, and I'd jump out of bed. Time to go to church. Get up. Get ready. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a question. You know, back then, you're like, you know, is that really necessary? Well, I'll tell you to this day, I'm 31 years old, and not once have I ever thought, do I want to go to church this Sunday? Do I want to go to church this Wednesday? So if you're a man of the household, first of all, get your family up. Don't neglect. Be a man of God. Get your family up. Get them to church. Make it a priority. Instill in your family and your kids while they are young that, yes, this is something that the Bible says to do. Do not neglect it. Because if you do neglect it as the man of the household, or maybe you're a single mom, as a mom of the household, if you neglect it now, then it's going to reap into your children's lives in the future. If you neglect it now, they are going to neglect it later. And so me being raised that way, it's instilled in me. You know, you say, oh, well, you're the pastor's kid. You're a youth, you're a youth pastor. But I haven't always been. I haven't always been. Pastor Mike, Pastor Kim haven't always been. Sam has not always been. So if you instill it in your kids and instill it in your family young, then you will set the stage for the rest of their lives and generations on. And when you are in church, that is more, even if you're not, even if your kid is not living for the Lord yet, or your spouse is not living for the Lord yet, if you're the man of the household and you get them there, that is one more opportunity for them to get filled with the Holy Spirit. One more opportunity and chance for the Holy Ghost to work on them and to show the enemy that, that he can't have your family. Don't neglect church because eventually it will unfold in your life. If you're committed to church, then things are going to go smoothly in your life. But if you neglect it and you neglect the ways of God, because when you say no and are uncommitted to church, then you're really saying no and being uncommitted to your heavenly father. Amen. So don't neglect going to church. It says here, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is nearing. Church is the place of, of encouragement. I mean, I don't know about you, but have you ever just, you know, had something going on in your day, uh, especially on a Wednesday night, right dab in the middle of the week, you know, or Sunday morning you come and you've had just a rough weekend 
And uh, but you get to church, and you know, you walk in the door, and there's grandma standing there. And I mean, how, how many of you, for real, have had a grandma hug? It, it's like she has the hugs of anointing. I don't know. She can hug you, and literally, you just. Oh, yeah, I mean, I've just cried before. Even growing up, you know, going over to her house, I've had something going wrong. I'd walk in the door, and she'd know she'd hug me, and I'd just cry. Well, it's the same way at church. You can come in, and, and it's the body of Christ coming together to encourage one another. You had a bad week? Hey, I'm here. Let's talk. Let me pump the Word of God into you. You know, have you been, did you find out where you diagnosed with cancer? Get your tail into church because especially, you know, at the river where we go, if you come and you say, I've been diagnosed with cancer, then we are going to handle it. We are going to lay hands on you. We are going to believe with you. We are going to speak life into you. Whereas if you would have stayed home, you might not get that. You might not have that faith. But when you come to church and you're encouraged with the body of believers and then you listen to a message that's anointed from your pastor, have you ever had a message spoken right to you? It's like Pastor Mike that week literally thought of you knowing everything going on in your life without even really knowing. And he wrote that message for you. That's the Holy Spirit. That's how it's supposed to be at church. Not only are you going to church to be encouraged by the message and by the bodies of believers, but you are going to encourage others. You are going to pour yourself out to others. Be ready when you come to church. Say, Lord Jesus, use me. Use me today to minister in the gifts of the Spirit as you would will. Use me today to encourage my pastors. Use me today to serve here. Use me to encourage somebody else that may be having a hard time struggling. Use me today to give to someone that's in need, Lord, to give here to the church financially. Whatever it is, Father, I am going to church today to encourage the body of believers and I'm telling you when you do that when you go to church with that attitude and you commit with that attitude you'll feel so good you'll feel so good going in you'll feel so good leaving out because there's too many churches these days where people are going in discouraged and they're leaving discouraged they're going in depressed and they're leaving depressed they're going in sick and they're leaving sick and that's not the way that God intended it to be Church is supposed to be a place where we don't neglect it, but that we go in, that we encourage one another with the Word of God. You be encouraged with the Word of God. You get blessed. You get strengthened and built up in the things of God. That's what church is. So when you sit back and say, I don't need to go, that's you basically pridefully saying, I don't need any help. And that's pride. And pride, it comes before the fall. So if you find yourself in the slippery slope of not going to church committedly, if you find yourself, you know, in technology world today, staying at home, you know, saying, oh, I'll just watch online, then you are going down a slippery slope where the enemy is going to come in and use that neglect against you. He will, even if your intentions are not wrong. So you think he will use that against you. So I'm telling you tonight, commit, commit to church. Work, vacation, sports should never interfere with church. Now work, it's biblical. You got to work. Vacation, it's fine. Sports, they're fine. I do all of those. My husband does all of those. But when it begins to consistently interfere with church, with your attendance, that's when you need to just put yourself at a halt and go, hang on a minute. Is this beginning to take first priority over God? Is this beginning to take first priority over me going to church and being fed and being used in the things of God? I mean, I know I'm only 31, but any job that, that I had, you know, growing up as a teenager, um, watching my dad, you know, my family members, the first thing we told, you know, the, employ in the employer, I can't work Wednesday nights and I cannot work on Sunday. Uh, mornings we didn't have church Sunday nights so every once in a while you know as a teenager I might work an afternoon Sunday but I didn't even like that but I'd say I can't work on Sunday mornings I don't care who they were they all respected it you know so you may sure you may have some bosses out there that get angry about it and stuff like that but when you put God first everything else will line up 
Even if they get angry, God will have favor on you. He will bless you. Everything will turn out right. If it's moving you from one job to the other, it doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever it is, you put God first and you tell them, I cannot work on Sunday mornings. I cannot work Wednesday nights. You put God first. He will bless you. He will prosper you. It will pay off because you've got to be with the other believers. You've got to be together with the body of believers getting fed and being encouraged. So Acts 2.42, it says, let me get a sip. Acts 2.42, if you got your Bibles. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. Verse 43 says, A deep sense of awe came over all of them, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property, their possessions. They shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together. At the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, shared meals together with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do not neglect, but rather devote yourself to church. There's so many people trying not to neglect church, trying not to, you know, trying to make it to church. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Go ahead and just devote yourself. Devote yourself. Devoted means give all or a large part of one's time or resources to. Give all or a large part of your time and resources to your church. This is the word of God here. Don't neglect church because Church is where your needs can be met. So when you neglect church, you are neglecting your needs being met. Rather, devote yourself. Devote yourself to the body of Christ, and you'll be blessed spiritually. You'll be blessed financially. And you don't have to do, you don't have to do life on your own. You have the body, that, that the family together to help you, to help you persevere through things, to help you be encouraged. It's a place where you can be blessed and you can bless others serve in your church being devoted find find a ministry to help out in and if you don't know you know what your thing is yet then 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 just jump in with something i mean when you serve in the church serving helps you discover and fulfill your calling you know i have a confession pastor sam and i weren't called into the youth ministry I mean, we didn't wake up one day and, you know, I didn't, I, I've never said in my life before I entered youth ministry, I'm called to be a youth pastor. I had no idea. I knew I had a calling on my life. Um, I don't know about Sam, but I knew, <laughs> I knew I had a calling on my life. And Pastor Mike and Pastor Kim came to us one day and said, hey, we need help. We don't have, you know, a youth group. Would y'all be willing to volunteer, you know, to help for a little while? And to be honest, I was like, yeah, sure. I didn't really enjoy it at first. I was like, I, you know, I kind of wanted my Sundays, you know, to take my naps and stuff lost that but after a while after a while of serving after a while of being de devoted to it and, and important into these kids man it rolled over into our calling one day I woke up and I was like I can't I, I can't imagine not doing this and then it turned into you know quote quote my our job my 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 occupation I don't even work as a hygienist anymore this is what we do it's our calling we put we put everything in this it's a calling so what was just Pastor Mike and Pastor Kim having a need at the church God having a need at the church turned into a calling so you've got to put yourself in that position and then and, and find somewhere to serve in the church because as you serve God will promote you God will move you up, not just in the church. You say, I don't want to be a youth pastor. I don't want to. No, no, no. If you serve in the church, if you serve the Lord, he'll promote you in every way in your life, in your business, at your home, you know, at your um, sport, whatever you do. As you serve in your church with the body of believers, he'll promote you. He'll promote you. I mean, and it feels good to serve. It feels good to be a part of the body of Christ to help uh, uh, the church, River, Pastor Mike, Pastor Kim, the pastor's reach the lost it's what it is whether you're mopping the floors or whether you're up on stage you are all working together making it move and and function correctly to reach souls the ultimate plan so find your place serve 
serve. You can find out your calling and fulfill the calling of God on your life. And then one of the last points here tonight, it says here in verse 47 in Acts 2, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. If you're not enjoying church, you need to change things up. You need to find out where you're supposed to be, find the church you're supposed to be at, change your attitude, whatever it is. Get your life right because church should be fun. Church should be enjoyable. You should be ready and excited to go to church, excited to see your friends, excited to see your pastor, excited about the message. I mean, just excited. You know, dress good, get you know, get there feeling good, get your whatever it takes. You get there and church should be enjoyable. If it's not, you need to do some readjusting in your heart because it's a, it's a heart condition. You know, uh, maybe, again, like I said, if you're, if you're not under the, the pastor that you're supposed to be under, the, the one that you are called to be under, then you need to find the one that you're called to be, to be under. Otherwise, you're not going to be happy. You're going to continuously uh, be angry with your pastor. Find the one you're supposed to be under. But church should be fun. Church should be enjoyable. You should love it. And then devote yourself. This is another point. Devote yourself to your pastor's teaching. Devote yourself. You know, if you are going to believe in the book of Acts, in the full word of God, in the Pentecost, in the Holy Ghost and fire, then go on and believe in it. Go on and believe what your, what your pastor is saying. If you're not, then go find a pastor that you are called to be under and then believe that. Whatever it is, get under the teaching that, that you believe in, and you go full-fledged with it. You agree with your pastor. You encourage your pastor, and you devote yourself to that teaching. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 says, Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. All right? This is a gift that Christ has given you. You ready? The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teachers. Their responsibility is, is to equip God's people, that's us, to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Now, if you are not supposed to be in church, if you do not have to go to church, then why did God, why did Jesus bless you with a pastor, gift you, a pastor as a president. I mean, Pastor Mike, you know, open it up. Boom, there, pop. Woohoo! Pastor Mike is here. He is your gift. He is a gift. Pastor Kim is a gift to you. If if God gave you a gift, don't you think you ought to get to know your pastors, listen to your pastors, take your pastors seriously, get to church on Sunday morning and hear the message that the Holy Spirit has imparted to them to get to you? They're not just there as a I don't know, their occupation. He is called by God. She is called by God to bless you. Their responsibility is to equip you, God's people, to do his work, to build you up and let it continue until we all come into such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we're, we're just mature in the Lord. We're just mature in the Lord and that we finally measure up to the full and complete standard of Christ. That is what a pastor does for you. You've been assigned one. He gave you one. He appointed one to you. That is their responsibility. They are to help you grow. They are to help equip you. They are to help you measure up to the full and complete calling that God has on your life. And that's a big deal. It's a big deal. If God gave and appointed you one, then, then get in church and listen to what they have to say. Take it, get to know your pastor. Have you ever met somebody who you said, oh, where do you go to church? Oh, I go to, you know, so-and-so church down the road. Oh, yeah, who's that pastor? Oh, I forgot. Okay. You don't go to church. You may go there every once in a while. Get to know your pastor. Listen to him in the, in the word of God that, that he preaches. Get a relationship with him so that when something goes on in your life, you can go to him, you can go to her, and you can find some answers. Amen? You are, if you are not called to one of the fivefold ministries that I just mentioned here, the apostle, preacher, teacher, prophet, evangelist, if you're not called to one of those, then you need to be in the congregation listening. Now, even those fivefold ministries, 
they all have pastors. Pastor Mike, Pastor Kim have a pastor, uh, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown that they look to, evangelist prophets and all that. They have a pastor that, 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 they, that they go to. So no matter who you are, you have a pastor. You have somebody pouring into you. Because you can't truly mature in the Lord through the teaching and preaching of your pastor if you're only going every once in a while. If you're only going when you feel like it. If you're only going when it's convenient for you. You can't mature in your faith by having church at home, you know, just staying at home and listening online all the time. Uh, you, you can't mature in the Lord like you should. You've got to be present there. You've got to be there. Being fed by your pastors. So I'll leave you tonight with Matthew 28, 19 through 20. And remember, be encouraged by this. Don't, don't be downcast and go, oh, that's me. Just get up and go to church Sunday morning. Get up and go. Be there. Commit to it. Devote to it. And, and you'll see a change in your life. You'll see uh, just a, a pep in your step. I'm telling you. Uh, you know, Wednesday nights and right dab in the middle of the week, in the middle of the work week, going to church on Wednesday nights is so refreshing to me. Uh, Pastor Kim teaching the Word of God, just having fellowship with other believers right dab in the middle of the week. My children going and having fellowship and getting taught on Wednesday nights by Pastor Tiffany. It's refreshing. It's encouraging. Matthew 28 19 and 20 in closing tonight. Therefore go, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of age. Your church is a training ground. Your church is a training ground. Get in church so that you can be trained up, so that you can be discipled, and then you can disciple others. Amen? Get in church. Share this message. Get it out there. Commit to God. Co devote to God. Tell Him in your spirit, Lord, I'm done being complacent with church. I'm done being mediocre. I am committed. You're going to see my face there Sunday morning. You're going to see my face at prayer Monday night. You're go Every opportunity I can get, I'm going to be at church with the body of the believers, being encouraged and encouraging others. We love you guys. Sunday, 1030. Uh, we'll see you there. And then Monday night, we have prayer. Message me if you needed more info on some of the resources that, that I used that I showed tonight. I love you guys. And in closing, let me pray for you. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this, this group of people, Father. I thank you, Lord, that everyone under the sound of my voice would simply, if need be, be convicted, not condemned. We curse condemnation and guilt right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, that that sweet righteousness rise, sweet glory, joy would rise up, Father, in everyone that listens to this message, that they be encouraged, that they be enlightened, that they be motivated and determined to be committed and devoted to church from this point on, Father. And I thank you that as they do, that they immediately begin to see the results in their lives and in their families' lives. We give you honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. And, uh, Share this message. We love you, Penny. We love you. <laughs> My daughter. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I love you guys. Um, just scrolling through the messages. Hey, Lindsay. <laughs> Griffin said, get out of bed and go to church. That's it. Train them up. Train them up right. Train up them kids right. All right, you guys. I love you. We'll see you Sunday morning. Um, comment down below again just to say hey and that you are watching. We'll see you later.